Good morning, Iona. You're listening to the WICR Morning Show here in the basement of La Penta in the WICR station, of course, along with me, producer Joe Archino. Jersey Joe, everyone. Thanks for coming in. Yeah, very glad to be here. I always enjoy doing the morning show. Yeah, well, uh, Ken Reichman, let's just uh, shout him out. He was on a four-show uh, four streak. Yeah. Uh, and then today he, uh, he texts me. He says he's not going to be able to make it. He's uh, traveling. So... Disappointed. It's been a while it, since the three of us. He broke the streak. Yeah, been a while since the three of it's us. It's been a while. It has. Since I think it's the last time we we actually did a show together is when you gave the nicknames. I think that was it. Yeah, that was like that was a long time ago. Oh man. All right. Well, I guess we'll go on without him. I lost my paper. Whoop. All right. So uh, let's go to the weather real quick. Right now it's cloudy with 41 degrees today. It's going to be colder with rain and drizzle, high of 46. Tonight, low of 42, dropping down with rain, a thunderstorm. And tomorrow, periods of sun. Oh, thanks, Joe. Uh, tomorrow, periods of sun, windy and warmer, high of 60 degrees. This weather report is brought to you by Iona College. Move the world. I am really disappointed in today. Let's, let's hear, Pete. Let's I'm, vent. I'm disappointed because now, you know, you get so used to, like, the 55, 60-degree weather that we had the past couple days, then it drops down to 40, and now I can feel myself getting sick. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, And now I'm not going to be able to enjoy the warm weather because I'm going to be sick. I hear you. I hear you. I was you, going you, say you, hear, you say you hear me, but you're not getting sick. I'm the one getting sick. Hey, don't, don't jinx it. I've, been, I've had a nice streak so far. No sickness so far this year. I want to keep it that way. <sighs> Listen, I, I would never wish upon sickness on anyone, so you no. know what? I agree. You're a good guy. Uh, hey, thanks. Let's talk about world news. Ukraine, <laughs> this is this is great. Uh, Ukraine dashes Darth Vader's presidential hopes. A uh, man wearing an outfit of Darth Vader announced he was running for president of Ukraine as the official candidate of the Ukrainian Internet Party. <laughs> The UIC, his famous run for president, ended Thursday when an election official said the man posing as the iconic movie villain might actually be an ele a electrician named Viktor Shevchenko. Shevchenko? I think that's a Shevchenko. Good, Shevchenko. That's Shevchenko. A, that's I got a good it. Stab. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, you know, it, as many times as you try to say someone's name, practicing looking at the show prep, it on it just never works out. Yeah. Uh, he told reporters that he now intended to uh, he's now intended to run for president of Russia because it is already overrun by little green people and a commander in chief like me would fit right in. Now that's not me saying that. That is uh, Victor saying that. It was in quotes. So yeah, kind of a shot story. at Russia. Yeah, little shot. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, let's that let's uh. We've been hearing about Ukraine all year round, all semester, I should say, not year round. Uh, it's insane what's going on. Yeah. Now you got Darth Vader involved. I mean, how, how much Darth worse could Vader. it get? How much worse could it get? <clears throat> well, I mean, Darth Vader is pretty cool. He has cookies. You know, Darth come Vader. to the dark side. We have cookies. You ever see that? Yeah. Uh, all right. So let's let's go over. Let's come back back here to uh, the U.S. <laughs> what's happening with the Senate? Uh, well, th I thought this was a really interesting story. Uh, the other day, the Senate Intelligence Committee voted to release parts of a highly contested secret report that harshly criticized the CIA's terror interrogations after 9-11, and the White House said it would instruct intelligence officials to co cooperate fully, and um, there was a panel vote. And they voted 11 to 3 to order the declassification of almost 500 pages of the 6,300 6, page review. And it, it had things such as waterboarding and other enhanced interrogation methods that were used um, to try to get information on the war on terror. And it's one of those things where a lot of people are now saying, well, if you're going to release the, the thing, don't declassify parts of it. We have a right to know it all. Um, so there's a lot of controversy surrounding this right yeah, now. Yeah, I mean, the American people, I mean, uh, this, is, this is the way I look at it. They want to know it all, but maybe they don't. Yeah. Because we don't know what goes on. Maybe we don't want to know everything. That, you know what I'm saying? Um, I guess, I guess uh, an ignorance is bliss kind of uh, thing comes about. But um, I believe that for Americans, they have the right to know. Yeah. But I wouldn't want to know everything. Because that, that just, that either ruin it for me. Or not ruin it as like oh it's a surprise like it just ruin it like now I know what the CIA does you know what I'm saying like yeah. if it's bad it's gonna look bad on the government if it's good you know still it's like wow you this is what's going on you know they're the CIA for a reason they're the Central Intelligence Agency for a reason everyone's not supposed to know it I completely agree I mean there's things that we just we as don't, much as I would want to yeah we don't need to know it, it it's this is highly sensitive information and the public just I mean. 
what do why do we need to know this? I mean, they've got a lot to worry about. They did what they had to do to protect us. And honestly, I think everybody wants to be a moralist when it comes to this kind of thing, but if you had to do the job that they had to do and you had the kind of circumstances they had to deal with, everything's I, in context. Yeah. It's 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 definitely a uh, a big controversy about everything that goes on in the CIA. I mean, there's things about, oh, is there an Area 51? Oh, is there, you know, there's that kind of controversy and there's controversy on interrogation and there's all that different stuff. Um, but I would, I would, I would personally, as much as like you would want to know, I don't just, just don't tell me. Just, yeah. you know, do what you got to do. I hope you're not doing anything to harm others, but I, I, that's not my job. It's not, it's above my pay grade. If, if you will, and hopefully they're doing the right thing. Yeah, we're in yeah. agreement. We're in agreement. All right, so let's let's move over to something more happy. Happy stuff. Entertainment movies out this weekend. Captain America: The Winter Soldier comes out. Steve Rogers as Captain America struggles to embrace his role in the modern world and battles a new threat from old history: the Soviet agent known as the Winter Soldier. Back to Soviet Russia. <laughs> Well, it's not Soviet Russia now, but back to Russia. Yeah. Uh, this is starring Chris Evans, Captain America, obviously. Samuel L. Jackson is just everything. He's just in everything. Everything. Uh, I mean, technically his character is Nick Fury. Basically. But he's just everything. Yeah. Uh, Scarlett Johansson from The Avengers. Uh, she's going to be playing... Uh, did she play Black Widow? Yeah, Black yeah. Widow. Black Widow. She'll be uh, starring... Uh, IGN says that Captain America 2 is one of the one of Marvel, Marvel's bests and sets the bar for all of the summer 2014 comic book movies to follow. Now, I mean, if if a different comic book movie came out before this one, I'm sure IGN would say the same thing. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to I don't want to say they're not credible, but like I feel like every single movie I see, the best movie this year, they're all award the winning. Yeah. You know, like it's just every time it's like the best movie. It's I can't Obviously, it's not. If I got 15 of them saying, oh, this is the best movie of the year. This is the best movie of the year. This is the best movie of the summer. You know, you hear that guy, the I best have... movie. <laughs> like, I can't do it. It's a good movie, fine, but don't keep saying that every movie in a trailer, the most anticipated, the best, the this, the that. Enough. That's fair. That's fair. What do you have to say about that one? Well, I don't know. I'm I'm very excited for the new Captain America. Oh, don't I... get me wrong. I'm excited. But don't go on every single movie and say, hey, it's the best movie out there. Yeah. I mean, I'm not the biggest IGN guy when it comes to their reviews because it's like you say, everything is like 9.0, amazing. You must watch this film. An I feel like classic. IGN is very credible with games. With games, they're better, yeah. Very credible. Now, let's, let's talk about games. Let's Ti talk. Titanfall comes out for the 360 on Tuesday, I believe. Um, Titanfall is obviously a very popular name out there now for Xbox One users. What do you think about this whole – I mean, I have an opinion on that we'll get to. We'll talk about it. What do you think about this whole releasing games for both the Xbox One and the Xbox 360? Um, do you feel it's necessary? They're doing it because they need to? Do you think they're doing it because they want to? Um, or do you think that it's just a gimmick just to get more money? It's a tough one because, I mean, usually when uh, the new console cycle comes out, for a little while they're still making the games for both the systems, like you saw with the Assassin's Creed, the right. new one. They made it on both, the new Call of Duty for a while. So I think it's it's just getting more money because there's the people who aren't willing to go out and spend that money on a new system yet, and they don't want to miss out on that audience. Well, well I'm, so I'm one of those. I yeah. mean, I'm going to be honest. I'm not going to go out and spend 500 bucks for something that's only 500 gigs when each game takes up like 60 gigs yeah. just to play it. Not even to save the game, just to play it. And that's not even talking about DLC, which if anyone doesn't know what DLC is, it's downloadable content. Um, it's it's ridiculous. Crazy. And, and you know what's funny? Uh, the shooting game, like say Battlefield, is maybe like 30 gigs, and then... And then NBA 2K14 is 60 gigs. gigs. How does that work? I, I, do we really need to see LeBron James's face that detailed? Well, LeBron we do. I'm not sure about the other players, but uh, definitely LeBron. I shouldn't have brought LeBron yeah, the, up because of the heat <laughs> here. We have a heat fan in the house, in the station right now in studio. Some people have called me the biggest LeBron James fan at Iona College. You're probably the only LeBron James. No. Probably. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, we, I definitely met some LeBron fans. Um but, yeah, so, you know, my opinion on it is, um, if you care, uh, I think they have an obligation to. Because I feel like if they didn't, 
Yeah, yeah. Obviously, it's about the money. I mean, what what it, what isn't in life when it comes to business? Yeah. Um, I think they have an obligation to because if they said, oh, okay, Xbox One's out, no more games for 360. You need to buy an Xbox One to play. I think everyone would be like, all right, I'm gonna go get PS4. It's cheaper. That 400 bucks is a big difference. It, but 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 from 500 to 400, that 100 bucks, huge difference for people. Yeah, absolutely. Plus. People be like, okay, I can go get a PS3. They're still making PS3 games. I can go, you know. Yeah. I think they have an obligation to do it. Now, the bad part of all of this, and it's understandable, is that you only have so many servers for each company. Sony has a number of servers, and so does Microsoft. Now, Microsoft, I think, has a bigger fan base when it comes to playing live. Yeah. I, I could be wrong. True. But I think when it comes to the PlayStation Network, especially because of what happened with the security breach a couple years back, um, that really messed up everything. Uh, <laughs> I think that people either switch to Xbox 360s live or they just don't play PlayStation Network. Or they do and they trust it, and then they should. I mean, I'm sure they wouldn't go out and be like, okay, we still have a security problem, keep playing. Yeah. I'm sure that wouldn't happen. But the problem is that once everyone starts moving over to Xbox One, they're going to need more server space. They need better servers for Xbox One because it's higher graphics. Uh, Battlefield 4, you could play with 60 players. It's like 30 v 30. It's ridiculous. Um, but in like a year, I want to say, they're going to cancel out Xbox Live for the 360. They're going to do the same thing with the PlayStation Network for the PS3. They're not going to allow you to connect anymore because they don't have the room. They don't have the space. I mean, you need a country full of servers to have every single console that you've made in the past that connects to the internet to you know to work you know so that's definitely going to be a selling point for them like okay well we're not offering xbox live anymore and it's going to also hurt them like it has with the original xbox as i'm sure people with the original xbox when the xbox 360 came out they didn't want to pay for it they went to playstation or they did that the whole thing with playstation was you had to spend a hundred dollars yeah for a ps3 which PS3. i think was ridiculous yeah that was um unbelievable. i think i think the main reason why it was that high is because the blu-ray and blu-ray was starting to really get popular then it was like this new thing like ooh, blu-ray you know blu-ray. um but i i'm waiting for e3 in june now i had the opportunity to get the xbox 360 for my birthday and i turned it down i said i want to wait for e3 because number one, I'm not gonna be able to play during the school year anyway because I have no time. No time. And number two, I think that paying 500 bucks for something that little, like I feel, like, I feel like it's a test run. This first Xbox One, I feel like E3 is gonna release like a terabyte version that cools better, that's like just better, smaller casing. Like I just, I feel like E3 is gonna, even if it's a price drop, something, then I would be more content on buying an Xbox One now. E3 is going to release, oh, we have a terabyte version coming out. Now, when's that going to come out? During that uh, that, uh, that holiday, holiday, yeah. Yeah, holiday season. So what does that mean? I'm probably not getting an Xbox One until late February next year because they probably won't be available because, you know, everyone's, like, jumping because it's like yeah. hotcakes to get a console. Definitely. It's like they're, I feel like they're worse than the Jordan sneakers. <laughs> I think I'm so. I'm serious. I think so. Uh, even though the Jordan sneakers, people – Go nuts People over those things. People fight each other yeah, over those. I, didn't someone get shot once? I think so. I think there was like, like a it was stabbing. on the news or, yeah, or stabbing. Yeah, something like outrageous. That. For a pair of shoes, you could wait like a couple weeks for and just yeah, get them it's without not worth, any it's struggle. It's not worth stabbing somebody over a pair. No, of shoes. it's not worth. No, not. not at all. So, and you, you're a PS4 guy. Yeah, you PS4 a, guy. You have a PS4. PS4. Hey, it's it's great. I mean, like you said, there's not time to play it during the school semester, but yeah. uh, when you have those nice little breaks. I really, I really need to beat uh, GTA Five. Yeah, we were talking about that the other Oh, time. man. If you want to laugh, go on, go on YouTube.com. Search the Achievement Hunter Let's Play of the GTA Five heist. Now, these guys at Achievement Hunter, they have created their own heist. Um, rumor has it that the new update for GTA Five. We'll have a multiplayer heist version where you can create your own heist with your friends, plan it out, and go uh, do a heist. Now, I'm not going to be – I don't condone this in real life. This is only a video game. <laughs> this is a video game. Um, but these guys kind of plan it out in real life, meaning they sit in a conference room with the GTA 5 map, and they start planning out what they're going to do in the game. And the commentary is hysterical. Now, warning, parental warning. It is a little inappropriate. A little bit. And the beginning of the YouTube video gives you a parental warning. So, please, kids under 17, do not watch this. 
uh, unless your parents are around, they let you, and I'm sure their parents get a laugh out of it anyway. So, let's go to sports. Before you say that, though, uh, our original point, we let, let off with Titanfall, and there are retailers selling Titanfall a little bit early for Xbox 360. So, maybe if you're lucky and you, think you want it, You think it's a little early? I think so, a little bit. I was reading this morning that uh, some cop that some stores have started have got their shipments in and they're selling them early. So if uh, maybe I mean that's I mean to be honest, which is sad, that's not a surprise to me. No, they do it a lot. Yeah. They do it a lot. The only problem is if you get caught playing online with that early, then they know something's up. Yeah. So Big Brother's watching you. Big Brother. <laughs> Just a little bit for everybody there. Yeah. All right, so let's go on to sports. The Yankees versus the Astros. Uh, the wrap up. The Yankees finished the series one and two, one last night, four to two. At least it wasn't a sweep. That would have been really bad, really bad. Offense has really struggled in three games, obviously. Let's 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 talk about uh, Tanaka here. Big so, game tonight. What do you, what game. do you think? Well, it's kind of been all the hype. I mean, the pitching has really held up well in the preseason uh, and spring training. Really looked good, but um, this is different. Obviously, this is a uh, uh, his first game under the big lights going on the road to Toronto so that's going to be interesting he doesn't have the home crowd in front of him his first is game. this the guy who rented the plane to bring his dog yes to train okay. that's him um so I mean look it's hard to see what's going to happen here I think the Blue Jays aren't uh explosive offense they have a couple of nice bats in their lineup but I think that Tanaka might have a nice showing tonight I I hope I hope and uh let's talk about uh you know I don't want to talk about the Yankees. Let's talk about the Mets. Starts the season's uh, 0 for 3. Bullpen's looking horrible. And the Mets will play the weekend series against the Cincinnati Reds. Here's the first pitch, and the season's <laughs> over. Poor Mets. Poor quoting, Mets. Quoting family guy, of course. Yeah. I mean, after the first game, that's all you could think of. Just that in the uh, Boomer and Carr, and they were playing that uh, that little clip from family guy over and over again. Because, I mean, it's it's got to be tough being a Mets fan. I mean, you have uh, so much hope after this offseason. They played a good first game. They the starting pitching has played well in the first three games, but like we said, that right. bullpen they they're just bl giving the games up. They've been really bad. I'm I'm gonna be honest with you. Uh, watching baseball now, it's no fun anymore. I just I feel like all the players are just horrible, it's, especially it's for the Yankees. The Yankees at one point pulled the Miami Heat, bought the best team. <laughs> I mean, they did. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sit here and lie. They spent and say a lot of did. money this offseason. They spent a lot of money this offseason. I'm talking about when they had like that straight like winning streak of World Series. Oh, they spent yeah. a lot of money on people, and now the Yankees fans are spoiled and think we're going to have a team like that again. We will not. Okay? That's like a once every 50 years kind of thing. Like, it ain't happening again for a long time. And it's just, it's sad. Because my mother and I would watch it, my mother would be very, very, very upset, and I'll go, Ma, this isn't the 98 Yankees. Like, this isn't, like, what we remember from 98 to 2002. You know? <laughs> Well, part of the problem with the Yankees, too, is back to those the golden times there. Is the Yankees, the prospects, they had such good farm systems. Oh, they had yeah. a lot of good prospects. The de That's where the Derek Jeters of the world, the Marianos, came up. Let me ask you a question. Do you think the loss of uh, Steinbrenner Sr. Was a, was a hit to them? I, I do think. I mean, I think his, his sons kind of spent last offseason kind of trying to because there's some people not too happy with them. I don't think they had the will. In, I mean, their father... He would spend whatever it took to win. He he it doesn't matter. He would That's do true. anything it took. That's true. And you get the sense sometimes that his two sons maybe are not as much committed. They're a little bit more uh, worried about their money and their investments. So, but uh, they showed last season that they were gonna that they spent a lot of money there. But the Yankees really need to get back to developing <sighs> prospects because that's what they were been best. I at feel like doing. I feel like we're in a rebuild stage right now. I don't I don't think. Uh we have going to have a winning team for a couple of years. Well, it's a weird roster because they've oh, got a lot of very weird. They've got a lot of aging guys like Teixeira, Jeter, who are kind of <laughs> going towards the end. Especially yeah. Jeter, he's retiring. He's retiring, yeah. And then they have guys like Ellsbury and McCann, who they just shelled out a lot of money for. So it's a weird mishmash roster. But I agree with you. I don't know if this team's a real competitor for the World Series anytime soon. No, I, I don't think so either. Um... <laughs> I was going to say something about the Mets, but it's not fair. Yeah, uh, we, we've, we've, uh, we've, we've done by, enough. By saying we have a really horrible bullpen, the Mets, <laughs> I, I think uh, that's enough. All right, let's talk about the Final Four. is happening tomorrow. I don't get these times, but I'm going to say them anyway. <laughs> Saturday Saturday night, tomorrow night, we have UConn versus Florida. The one seed, the seven seed versus the one seed at 
six oh nine, not six o'clock, six oh not six fifteen, not six ten, six oh nine. So make sure you're at your TV, <laughs> six oh nine, and, and then Kentucky versus Wisconsin, the eight seed versus the two seed, eight forty nine, not eight forty five, not eight fifty, not nine o'clock, eight forty nine. So make sure you're there. I mean, you're watching the 609 start for the Huskies. You might as well watch the 849 start for the Wildcats. Uh, I know everyone's brackets messed up, but how's yours looking? Well, I, out of 62 people, I'm in. If Florida wins, I will come in second, and out of 40 people, if Florida wins, I will come in third. So, all right, really pulling for Florida to win this thing. <laughs> really pulling for Florida. I think we're all pulling for Florida. Uh, I think uh, Florida is the only team left on Nick Rippo's bracket. Nick Rippo's like bracket. the only team left. <laughs> so uh, the the Elite Eight messed him up because he had a good amount in the Elite Eight, but now the Final Four he has one. So and I don't think he has Florida winning the whole thing. Ooh, yeah, that's that's trouble. So that's uh, Final Four, and uh, I believe that's it for us. Yeah. Yeah, it was, good a good, it was a good show. Good show. Uh, I would just like to personally congratulate Jersey Joe. He will be our 2014-2015 WICR president. So thank you, Joe, and we uh, we congratulate you. You're definitely the right guy for the job. We also congratulate everyone else, including Spring Gonzalez, Tierra Holmes, Rob Moncardo, Callie Steverson, Krista Candia, Rob Vasquez, Anthony Carlo, Ian Sachs, Michelle Duhan. Uh, am I missing anyone? Was that everyone? I think you hit it all, yeah. I just want to say uh, thank you, Pete. Uh, you know, you've set the bar very, very high for me. Oh, stop. And uh, I'm going stop. to... Uh, the, b- the bar is only set high because I'm tall. <laughs> okay. And I'm going to... Very uh, easy to limbo under it. Uh, funny thing. I know. I'm going to do everything I can, though, to uh, make sure that the station continues to grow because you've done a really good job. And uh, Well, we appreciate that. Yeah. And uh, hopefully, Mike, uh, he's listening. We we thank, of course, Mike Demerges. He is the heart and soul of the station. Without him, none of this would have been possible. Nope. Uh, he's definitely put a lot of uh, elbow grease into this into the station. Uh, new telos that we just got in, the new boards, just mics, er- everything. He's uh, He's been great, and we thank him, of course, for everything. So that's it for us here on the morning show. We will see you Monday morning at 9 with Pat McGuire if he shows up. <laughs> Uh, the last couple of times he has been uh, either ill or traveling or something, which was understandable. So we, we hope he can join us on Monday. Of course, catch the sports vault today. Uh, a special edition. Rob Boncaro is going to be taking the reins from 2 to 3. And also, don't miss Full Metal Attack on Thursday, which I believe Nick Rippo will be taking the reins for as well at 6.30. And, of course, listen to the morning show every morning at 9.00. Uh, before we go, actually, real quick, I want to just say some events that are coming up. I don't want to miss those. Uh, walk the red carpet and show off your talent. ICTV presents the third annual film festival on Tuesday, April 15th at 7 p.m. This is happening in the Lapenta end zone. Uh, prizes will be given to the top pick in each category. Now, the categories are Vine slash social media short videos, news documentaries, Short Films in a Drama Section, Short Films, a Comedy Genre, and Best Animation Feature and Best Music Video. So there's prizes. Also, free food and refreshments will be served. So even if you did not provide something to the Music music Festival or Film Music Festival, I am shot. Film Festival, please go and just enjoy your fellow friend's work. Uh, Email Matt Donlin for submission details. I believe... Submission has to be in by April 12th. That's next Saturday. I'm not too sure, but make sure that you email him at mdonlin1 at iona.edu. That's m-d-o-n-l-o-n-1 at iona.edu. So, yeah. Also, uh, Strides for Speech Walk is happening on Sunday, April 13th from 1 to 4 p.m. in Lapenta Lot. Uh, this year, the event will benefit a speech pathology student here at Iona who is battling lymphoma and the Iona College Speech Language and Hearing Clinic. Please join us this year for the ninth annual Strides for Speech Walk. There will be raffles, food, children's games, and lots of other fun activities. $15 is a registration fee for students. If you have any questions, please contact Greta Lincoln at glincoln1 at iona.edu. That's G-L-I-N-C-O-L-N-1 at iona.edu. Great stuff going on uh, on campus, so make sure that you check, of course, the guy on a website for any camp- campus events that you would like to go to. That's it for us. We'll see you Monday morning at 9 on, of course, Ustream.com and Live365.com. Check it out. Search WICR. Many, many people in our industry 
from from Iona and Iona it's all about the people and Masscom is moving